Hello guys, welcome to my stream. I'm George. You can find me as uh, Volcero in various Amiga forums. It's Friday uh, and it's uh, my classic uh, Amiga uh, stream today for uh, you and uh, for having fun today with your my classic Pystone Amiga. It is uh, 1200 with a Pystone in uh, there and the Raspberry Pi uh, 3B Plus. Um, I continue on uh, installing stuff on my system and uh, trying to make uh, most of it uh, and install uh, applications that I would like to use on every day. How are you doing? Uh, Tito says the sounds that sounds familiar. First Samurai. I think so. Yes, it is. It is uh, First Samurai. So um, last week. We have seen uh, a few uh, applications to, to play music uh, and uh, try to cover a lot of uh, different um, audio formats. Uh, today I would like to start um, with uh, something different with um, trying to play music from a CD player and uh, try to play audio CDs and uh, see how this could work and uh, what can we do about it. Um, a few applications to play music, yes. We, uh, Amiga has a lot of applications for playing music. Um, and uh, yeah, last week I tried to cover some of the best or my favorite at least. And today we are going to continue on that. And if there is a time at the end, uh, we are going to see some uh, graphics uh, applications. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, I'm using my 1200 on the with the original case, or this is a, a recreation of the original case of uh, the 1200. But uh, these kind of cases do not have. Uh, space for adding a CD-ROM or a DVD play a DVD ROM. So the one of the solutions that are available is to connect a CD player at the PCMCA. And since we don't use it much right now, uh, and since I happen to have one of them, this is uh, one from the Sony Vario uh, that is compatible uh, with the 1200. And uh, this is the, let's see, uh, PCGA CD51. And uh, yeah, uh, it uses a PCMCIA. So I'm going to connect it and try to use it and try to install a CD audio players, a CD audio software uh, to play some uh, music from that and see how it goes and if we are um, uh, if we have time we could um, try to uh, copy some music from the um, audio cds to uh, mp3s so we, we will capture uh, music um, Cito says looks beautiful uh, pt vio brand is gone yes yes it is uh, it looks beautiful, it is uh, small and uh, goes perfect beside the uh, Amiga 1200. Uh, it is uh, one of the um, hardware that recently uh, we got um, uh, drivers for it. And since then it is not that easy to find this kind of uh, CD, uh, CD ROMs. But it is great and I think it is works perfect with uh, uh, an uh, Amiga. Uh, the only downside is uh, when you are using uh, PCMCA CD-ROMs, uh, it is difficult, uh, you can't take the audio from the PCMCA, so you have to connect through the audio jack of the CD-ROM. That's the downside, but uh, which means that uh, you need to change the input the output of the uh, let's say the speakers that you are using for your Amiga and connect it to the CD-ROM but that's not a big deal I guess so uh, let's see what we can do first of all we need 
drivers. So let's leave the music play for some at the background. I hope uh, the audio is fine and you can listen to what I'm saying. If not, please let me know. Um, so we are going to go to Aminet and let me search with the word Vio and see if that will give me the <coughs> sorry the driver. Okay, PCMCI CD dot LHA. A tap PCMCI CD driver Sony Vio. I think that's the one that we need. And it has here the the model that I'm uh, having. The driver was created by Aidan Holmes, and uh, yeah, let's give it a try. This is version 1.4. Okay, we got it. Uh, internet downloads. I forgot its name. <laughs> Let me. Have a look, PCMCA. Okay. So we have it here, and let's extract it in uh, RAM. So usually, when you have um, this kind of files, the device should go in the devs uh, folder. Uh, thank you, C2. Yes. PCMCIA CD. I forgot to change the, the screen again. So yeah, you can find it in um, Aminet PCMCIA CD dot LHA. I downloaded it, and we have the uh, mounting file and the device. Let's have a look in the README. So does it say anything about installation okay driver install copy pcmcia cd device to devs so we have devs here copying that here replace and the next is uh, you can use the example mount file included in the archive that requires ami cdfs or update an existing mount file by updating the tool types. Okay, so let me see if I have that. Usually, because I'm not having the CD-ROM uh, always attached to my Amiga, I'm uh, usually having this uh, CD0 in storage, in those drivers. Let me see. Yes, I have it here. And if I check the icons, PCMCIA CD.device. Okay. So this file, CD0, you can uh, copy that in storage DOS drivers or in devs uh, DOS drivers. The thing is that if you uh, put it here in devs, every time you boot your machine, it will try to connect to that uh, CD-ROM. And if you don't have that uh, uh, connected to your Amiga, it might uh, take time to boot. So let me connect it right now to PCMCA. And see if we can use it. Okay, this is powered on. Temporarily keep it there. And let me run the DOS driver. So right now, if I... Let's try that. Let's put this cd on there. Since I run the DOS driver, it should be, uh, start using this CD-ROM and uh, see here 
the CD mounted, so it works just fine. Okay, let me put it out. So the CD is removed, and uh, let's try something else. I'd like to install the um, CD player from the Amiga OS 3.9 to Amiga OS 3.2. So let's see if we can do that. So as you can see the Amiga OS 3.9 uh, is right now mounted. Okay, and um, let me go to uh, I want to try and find the file, the files needed to copy the CD player. So if we go here, Okay, so inside the Amiga OS 3.9 uh, CD-ROM we can see all the files and in uh, WordPress 3.9 um, Utilities There is Play CD Okay, let me copy that to Applications Music, Play CD and try to run it. It might need some uh, gadgets or libraries, so we are going to see how we can make it uh, work. So music, okay, we have here play CD. It needs resource library version 44. Uh, what we can do is go to um, the CD ROM OS 3.0 Resource Library. This is not here, but it might be. Where is it? We have one here, let me copy that and try again, could not find all images for the skin. This usually is uh, um, in uh, NVAC or presets, so let me see if the icon has 
some uh, information no let me go again to the cd rom workbench 3.9 uh, prefs and let me check the presets there is a folder uh, called play cd so i'm going to copy that to uh, my system prefs presets as it is okay and since we are here the cd rom right now is cd0 so i will uh, enable this tool type and if i go again to the icon uh, the device is uh, pcmcia cd dot device let me add that as well pcmcia uh, cd dot device and the unit is uh, zero usually uh, the dos device only should be enough but uh, let's be sure that it will see the, the right uh, device answer play cd ok so it started let's see now if it, uh, if it uh, works actually let me stop this Inkle player and um, the uh, OS 3.9 uh, CD has some audio as well, so that's why it seems to play something. That was easy right so you can run the play cd from the amiga os 3.9 and what i would like to do is to uh, change the theme the skin of uh, of it there are a few uh, skins in aminet i think um let me check if we can find a better one i think in amiga loop there is one that i like a lot so i will try to find it and uh, install this one There are a couple in the Amiga look, so let's see that, which one we could uh, install. Okay, let's download it. Okay. So now we are listening to music from the audio CD, which is very good. Uh, easy and very clear sound, yes, yes, because the sound goes from the CD ROM directly. Uh, so nothing is uh, interferes. Um, okay, and uh, as we can see here, we have to extract and uh, copy the files in prefs play CD. So let me open again the directory opus and we have here the skin 
let's go to, to play CD to the prefs presets uh, prefs presets play CD you see here is, there is a, a folder the silver which is the, the default one so I'm going to copy this new one and rename it to skin old school just leave it old school like that and change here the skin from silver to old school save and restart it yeah that's a great uh, great skin I think let's try the other one as well this is named OSX like Ah, yeah, here it is the attachment. Download. And um, hmm. uh, internet downloads OSX like. And let's extract it directly in uh, Sys. Uh, preferences, presets, play CD. So uh, a new folder is going to be created here. I hope if I extract it, yes. Let me quit it and change to it. OSX like and see how it looks that's a silver gray as well so yeah let's have a have a uh, let's switch to another audio player uh, audio CD I have here the a collection of uh, Commodore 64 rocks from fast loaders um, I will not play whole, the whole uh, songs uh, but it will be a good test if you don't have this uh, collection I will propose you to go and buy it it is uh, it, it comes with uh, 3d CDs audio CDs and it's a great collection with uh, Commodore 64 music. Hello, Amika Kami. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I recommend it. I, I totally recommend it because their music is... Uh, the way they, they play the Commodore 64 music is awesome. And they also have uh, created a collection with um, Amiga uh, music. So let's hear something. So today, Amiga Kami, we are playing some music from Audio CD. So, and we try out the uh, CD ROMs.
So for sure, this is uh, playing fantastic. Um, and it was pretty easy to install the Play CD from Amiga OS 3.9 to the Amiga OS 3.2. Uh, let me see something because I think the Play CD has the ability to also um, find information about the CD, uh, audio CDs automatically. Let me have a look in Play CD. Does it have here information about that? No. Maybe not that version of Play CD because it's the first version that came with um, uh, Amiga OS 3.9. Uh, it says 16-bit uh, audio is so much clearer, great music, yes, and they use, um, they play the music fast loaders uh, like uh, metal or hard rock, and I really love the, uh, listening to their uh, compilations, so yeah, if you, if you like this kind of uh, music, if you like to listen to uh, game music, demos music, but a little bit Harder, I totally recommend the fast loaders. Um, so, okay, that is Play CD. We managed to make the uh, Sony Vio CD ROM play with from PCMCA. So, we are good on that. Let's see another um, audio player. If you don't want to use uh, Play CD for some reasons, um, there is another one. There are a lot in uh, Aminet, but I would like to test the Groovy player. Groovy player. I think that's the one. Quite old from uh, 1999. That's the freeware version. Okay. Falcon 11, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Hello to everyone, a little bit too late. No, not at all. Uh, we in installed the CD-ROM here to play audio music and I uh, showed how you can use the Play CD from the Amiga OS 3.9 and install and use it in Amiga OS uh, 3.2 if this is something that you would like to do. I like that uh, player because it is compact, it is small, it has some uh, very nice skins and uh, you also can uh, close it uh, and the music still plays without having the the program uh, anywhere the window of uh, this program anywhere in your screen so you can put on your music and uh, listen while you are doing other stuff and uh, playing music from uh, audio cities with uh, this kind of Amigas even if you have a 1230 um, or a, a low CPU, uh, CPU an O20 or O30, uh, you don't use the CPU at all for playing music. So this is also a benefit instead of using uh, MP3s or something like that. So Groovy Player, an alternative uh, player that I would like to test. Uh, and see how well it works and uh, internet downloads now you will tell me that uh, come on man it is 2024 no one plays music from uh, CD-ROMs maybe <laughs> if you have some good compilations or music that you love in uh, CD why not playing them with your uh, Amiga? Uh, Polar Music is also CPU free. 
Yes, but uh, to use Polar, you need to use a player and some uh, audio files like mods. Mods uh, sometimes are uh, taking a lot of uh, CPU resources and uh, also MP3s and things like that are quite hungry. Unless if you have a Python which plays quite well and uh, the CPU remains low uh, at low usage. Falcon Level says I like to play CD also Groovy Player. Oh, <laughs> I managed to find exactly the applications that you love. That's good. So uh, we have it here an installer, but uh, if you know me well, uh, I don't like to use this kind of installers, especially from a software that comes from um, 1990s because this uh, operating system is brand new and I don't want to uh, some software override some kind of library and I don't have a clue what is happening so what I see here this uh, groovy player has its locale preferences uh, and uh, fonts so nothing major, a major that we can't uh, copy ourselves. So what I'm going to do is take the, its folder and copy that into my music folder. And then rename it to Groovy Player and create a default uh, icon. like that and then I want to resize it in a better way like that or maybe hide the uh, files that do not have a, an icon and since we don't use the installer I will delete them I do not need them and align the icons like that okay and uh, snapshot all great so if i try to run groovy player it will fail because it can't find the icons the sorry the fonts so what i need to do is open the directory opus and have the groovy player folder in one side and the system on the other fonts fonts and copy the fonts over there like that so it should find it could not open preferences file that's logical because i haven't put the this file anywhere please define and set but it allows me to set uh, my default okay could not open SCAS device Please enter its name. Okay. So as we said, the SCSI device here is PCMCIACD.device. And the unit is, uh, sorry, zero. Save and use. And it just started. Um, let's see if we can play some music. I hear the CD spinning. So you can close it as well and uh, continue listening to the music. And that's because the CD-ROM works uh, on its own. You don't need to have any um, program running to do whatever. These programs usually they give the um, order to the CD-ROM to start playing or uh, check something, uh, move to the next track or something else. Uh, you don't need to, to have the program running. That's why you can uh, close it and uh, the cd still play, still plays. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Chitu says, Pola music is also CPU free and Prisma, of course. The problem with the Prisma is that um, it is difficult to find and you have to pay a lot of money to get one right now. <laughs> I, I think you Chitu have a Prisma, right? On your Amigas. Situ says lets you choose a public screen uh, too. Yeah. It has a lot of uh, preferences here and you can tinker it uh, a little bit. Let's have a look on its features. Groovy player uh, features. Supports SCSI 2 and Atapi drives, so it will work with everything. The PCMCIA driver works like an Atapi drive, uh, uh, CD-ROM. Um, all other CD player functions include play, pause, skip, search, so everything is uh, available. Nice front end that adapts to your screen depth and palette. Uh, and it looks nice. You can move wherever you want. And but you can't minimize it. It has fade out and things like that. Intro. Okay, let's play with intros. Two. So if you have an intro enabled, it should play for a few seconds and then skip to the next one. Hello, Aris Amika. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? We are looking to audio uh, players using the CD-ROM connected to PCMCA right now. Falcon 11 says you can try Dream CD player. Let's, let's give it a try. So it plays for 10 seconds, which is good for uh, YouTube videos as well. Let's download the Dream City Player if I still have any internet connection. It seems it is alive. But eyebrows doesn't respond. Let me start it again. Okay, Dream City Player is not available in um, Aminet with that name. Let's try Dream CD. Nothing. Let's try Dream. Uh, 700 uh, results. Difficult to find it. Let's try. Uh, I don't see it here at all. Uh, it's not available in Fal uh, Falcon, it's not available on Aminet. D 
TREA player. Nope. Nope. It's not there. It doesn't seem to be there. Unless if the, there is a, some kind of problem with the search you know, nominate right now. One of the applications that we saw uh, last week should also be able to play uh, audio CDs, which is Sound Player. And let's try that. Because if I recall correct, if you go to, you see here that about, it says CTDA. So let me see if I have to change some icon, no, but if I go to, how do we add, open, cd0, cd0, no, it still sees the Amiga 3.9 because that was not ejected, let me see, can I eject it? Uh, where is it? Song player. Documents. English. Um, use. Main scope. Audio database. Options. Does it have something like uh, settings? Options. Okay. Uh, CDDA here, okay. So I need to change that to PCMCIA CD device and the unit to zero. Uh, method auto, like that. And wow, if you click on this icon that has the CD, it gives you all the files. At least that's what I think it does. Double click on them. Play. Does it do anything? Not really. I remember back in the day when I had the, uh, a CD-ROM connected to my Amigas through the ID, the song player was one of the players that could be could uh, get the audio from the cable, uh, from the ID cable. So you did you you could have the audio out from the uh, Amiga uh, without having extra extra outputs. But right now it doesn't seem to to play anything. Maybe the method is not the correct one. Let's try that. And let's try the first song. But I don't see that uh, spinning. Um, Falcon 11 says, then sorry, I have it in my repository. I don't know where I download it. So player is not a city player, it goes over Pola, yes. Um, it can play CD, CD audio, but if it, for now it doesn't spin at all. So let me try that again. Okay, if it at least starts spinning, I can connect the, the Pola, the, the output from the Amiga and see if that plays, but it doesn't. 
says PCMCI dot device. Yes, that's that's the one. Options PCMCIA CD dot device. No, unfortunately, it doesn't play the the, the audio CD. Hey Javier, welcome, welcome and goodbye. See you later. Um, Falcon Eleven says not redirect from CD-ROM, or I don't know how to to tell. Okay, okay, I I understand what you say. So song player right now it doesn't play um, the audio CD from the PCMCA at least. Uh, Amulet Radio, I'm not sure if that supports audio CDs. Uh, let me check the note here. No. I think there is another um, audio uh, CD player, but uh, what is your preferred? I think that uh, having an uh, audio CD player, um, C uh, an audio player for Amiga OS 3, maybe it should come with uh, the operating system, like it used to be with the Play CD. But uh, there are um, a lot of uh, options in Aminet. Um, let's try this one, Mega CD player. I heard uh, good um, things about this player, so I would like to give it a try. So, applications, internet, uh, downloads. Okay, and that's here. With a funny uh, icon. <laughs> okay. And it also has its own fonts, so let me copy them into uh, Sys. Okay, it should be fine now. Let me check the icon if it has some kind of tool types. No, nothing. It open and closes instantly. Okay, let me um, see why this is happening. Is it because it is looking for the prefs files? It looks for the cd.device, but there is no tool type to change it, is it? So. Do I have to set that tool type manually myself? Uh, Introduction CD, okay. How to install? It's quite easy. Move my, uh, then click on install prefs fonts icon. No. System requirements. Low level library and ASL. So probably if it uses low level library it uses, yeah, it is for joystick uh, to control the the buttons or something. Is there a way to set the device? No not from these files. Um, 
It looks that it's for City32 only. Maybe, yes. Maybe, but uh, City32 is also... Uh, yeah, City.device. City32 is also an Amiga, right? Hey, Vincent, welcome to the stream. So, if there is a way to change the device, it should be able to play, to make it work. But we are not going to lose too much time on that. So if it is, uh, if it sets it in uh, the preference file, hmm, but it doesn't give any information in the guide. Amiga CD32 is great. Yeah, I agree with that, uh, Falcon. Really tough to find one right now, and uh, especially in a good price, but it is great. So, um, Vincent, what we were looking, what we are looking today is uh, I connected this uh, PCMCA um, CD-ROM to my uh, Amiga, and um, we tried some uh, applications for playing uh, CDs, audio CDs, and uh, one of them was the play CD from uh, the Amiga OS 3.9 and the other was the Groovy Player and both of them are playing great. Um, Falcon Level says I have two CD32 but one from 1997. Oh good, good. You mean that you bought it back then, right? And uh, you have the second one in case the first one breaks? or something like that. Uh, do you have any expansions on these uh, systems? Have you put any terrible fire or something? Uh, so what I would like to do now is to to rip some uh, audio from this audio CD, a, 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 a song uh, to an mp3 and see how this can be done. Um, one of the applications that you can do that, there are a lot of uh, apps and uh, to do something like that, but the one that I like to use is uh, Code Audio. So let's download it. Code Audio actually is a front end for um, some uh, audio converters like the LAME and others. Uh, but let's install this first. Yeah, it has here some information. Um, it was before named the MPEG encoder GUI uh, and it uses Let's see the dependencies because we are going to need to download them. Okay, currently supported encoders. So we need 68K and we need MP3 encoder or LAME. I think LAME is better to use to install, to, to uh, convert to mp3. So let me try here, lame. And actually see how much time it takes to convert one uh, song with a Python. So there is 98.2. This is the latest. Let's try this one. There is lames 3 100. Let me sort the list by date and find the latest version. Lame 3.100 for A60 60k. Okay. And 
refresh at least so we have code audio extracted in RAM and we have this one the lame we need only the uh, binary so I'm going to deselect everything clear selection and select only the last file extract great so we have code audio it doesn't need any uh, installation so I'm going just to copy that file in music and then code audio I will copy here the lame just like that and see if that works so code audio is a front end for lame and other converters uh, encoders uh, Vincent GR says I will buy the latest final writer for 65k 68k when available George you have a job to do Greek uh, speller <laughs> if it is possible why not I will uh, buy it as well if uh, as soon as it is uh, available so if you hear anything uh, about it please let me know the one that is uh, coming with the um, A600GS from uh, AmiKit uh, from, sorry from Amiga Kit. Um, I think it is a f almost full version it lacks some features I think it lacks the ability to to print and uh, it doesn't have the speller something like that Falcon Level says uh, my first had problems with video uh, composite yellow video cable I repaired already and also recapped it and it was uh, with SX1 still have second one was for good price before four years yes four years ago you could find them in a good price right now it's you can't uh, get one in a good uh, price unfortunately Falcon Level says I like all Amiga hardware. Who doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't? Um, this it says it says that it supports many but not specific. Many languages, you mean? Uh, quick mention on the first Amiga with CD, CD, CDTV, yes. CDTV was great for its time. But it didn't have so much uh, potential, I think, because in 1990 something that it was released, it still used uh, an Amiga 500 technology in there. Falcon Level says, Code Audio is great, I have it registered and I use it for convert MP3s. Yes, yeah, it's, it's great. Let's see how we can use it. Um, it has three different versions we can use the code audio lame although even if you use the code audio the main one it is pretty much the same uh, it just gives you a bigger window with all the options there for other encoders as well so let's see this one so this is happening because we have low stack and the what we can do and because it is, it uses a much user interface. So we can go into the icon uh, information and put some extra stack greater than uh, 32 k and it should work just fine. Please register. It's totally free. I have that registered in um, my Amiga OS 4 system, but I don't have the key right now here. So, uh, we should um, set where to find the download and install lane. Okay. Ah, it gives you options here. Okay, that's great. This one.
called uh, instead of the application my task this is a violation of basic match user rules ok installation complete lame has, uh -huh, has been installed in the following path and the preferences has been updated so it installs the file inside the binary bin uh, folder save the uh, Okay, so what we need now to do list uh, CD found no audio CD. Yes, okay, because it might need to tell it where exactly the device of the CD. So where is it? PCMCA. Here it is. Edit PCMCA device zero. Find a CD device was found. Okay. Perfect. It should be fine. Close. Falcon level says uh, yes, it is very nice, but it's pity that was it uh, with only Kickstart 1.3, Amiga OS 1.3 hardware. Also yes. Uh, it is beautiful. Are you going to buy one C2? Although I think the the uh, the second version that was not released, it looks a little bit better. Uh, Falcon Eleven says C2. Uh, I agree with you. Yes. Okay. So list. I should be able to get the CD audio here let me see if I extract the CD and insert it again like that now it finds the audio files ok let's convert one of them this one you can select multiple ones, but I'm going to do with this one and uh, select file. No, that, I don't want that. I want to get this one converted. Okay, you can put here information about the the song. Output file, volumes. Let's say applications, music, music, and here create a new uh, folder. And in here I will create a new one, uh, CD1. Great. Okay. So you can set the bit rate. Let's go with say twenty. And uh, I think from the list you have to. If you want only one uh, track, you have to remove the others. So it should make one track only. It has a lot of uh, options here, but let's do it with the default. I just changed the the bit rate. It has some presets here, which is helpful. Uh, preset CD, that's fine. Studio, let's go with insane preset and code. I will. <laughs> so it spins up and let's see how much time it will take. Just one song and see how, how it goes. Um, C2 says I would love, love one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything Amiga is cool. Uh, having a, a CDTV would be great, 
the thing is, what are you going to do with that? Uh, just for um, a collection, uh, for your collection to have it? Because uh, I don't see how you are going to be able to use it. When I have my Amiga here, I'd like to, to use it. And uh, that's why I don't like to have them um, in a box, in an attic or uh, a closet. Uh, Falcon 11 says this nice machine I don't have. Yes, uh, you, can, you have your CD32 and uh, you can play and do whatever the, uh, the CD TV does. The CTTV is nice because it looks different, but it doesn't have any other usage, I think. You can't play in the CTTV uh, full motion videos like you do with the CD32, can you? C277, just to show, it would not be that uh, useful. Yes, okay. So the conversion still keeps on. It is on 30% right now and it needs around three uh, more minutes close to five uh, four minutes so yeah it, it takes a, it takes some time to do it through pcmca because that's what it is used right now and um, uh, with a uh, with a python cpu meter let me see So if I go to uh, utils, but the system is pretty usable. So even if you put your um, CD to continue being ripped off uh, in uh, your uh, your uh, machine to MP3s. You can use the the rest of the system. It is responsive. As you can see, it seems that uh, it takes all the CPU. It is half the way there. And if we go to check uh, amiganews.de, let's see if we can uh, stress it a little bit and see if we can use the eyebrows while we are doing the uh, capturing. A new version of the Amiga E combiner. Nice. A new video of the Street Fighter 1. Falcon 11 says, do you remember, I think that uh, Code Audio was second spin before, uh, no, it was um, called the MPEG encoder GUI. And then it was renamed to Code Audio because it doesn't cover only MPEG, I think. C2 says, uh, wow, fully utilized CPU is so responsive. Yes, it is. It remains responsive. And uh, yeah, you see the eyebrows is not doing, uh, it doesn't have any delays or something. So if I go to the first page. Yeah, everything seems to work just fine. And the Wi-Fi is fine. And we are close to 73%. So you can set the, the whole CD-ROM to being captured and you continue to whatever you want. And remember that uh, the preset that I selected is the insane uh, quality. 320 BPS and uh, it's, a, it's a big uh, conversion. So 
So it's logical. I wouldn't even try to do that on my O30 Amiga. Uh, Python power, yes. That's what I, I like to do here in this stream, to, to stress it a little bit and see how useful can it be. Uh, I mean, you are doing something hard and something that takes a, a lot of resources and see with a system like that, uh, how fast can you go with uh, the PyStorm? Now, I don't know how many are going to do conversion of uh, audio CDs to MP3s, but it's there, it works, it's pretty fine, it's great. And uh, yeah, if you want to do it, please do. <laughs> I, I still remember uh, when I was doing some MP3 conversions uh, more than 25 years ago, and uh, we were waiting for hours to, to have one song in MP3. But uh, yeah, different times, we had more passions back then, I think, than now. Okay, list finished. We have the the song converted, I guess. So Code Audio is a great tool because you have the presets, so you don't have to, to go in detail and change uh, anything yourself. And if you want to do that and uh, make your own configuration, yeah, you can do it. Uh, you can, instead of typing uh, at the cell, all the... Um, uh, arguments that you would like to, to do, you have the code audio and uh, it's it's great. You have seen that it understood automatically the CD-ROM, uh, what kind of device it uses. Um, it, it was pretty easy to set it up, install, it downloads the um, binaries, the, the encoder binaries automatically. So if I would like right now, I think to download another binary, in, Download and install CDDB. Probably that's for uh, reading the. Let's try that. Uh, CDDB. Please set volume CDB and drive. Cancel. That's the library. Okay, installation complete. Okay, and if I install the FreeDB. And we have an off sync. Please restart the program and mail me a bug report of what you just did. Let me quit. Okay. And restart it. Should. Yeah. It crashes for some reason. Okay. That's fine. Uh, code audio. Exit. Quit. Let me increase the stack again. Let's do six, eight, seven. Soon. The code audio. This uh, application has also the uh, something like a wizard to go you step by step. So let's uh, remove all this. And select one uh, nice remove this one audio file next I can't find lame in the path specified pick a new path uh, proc dir binary lame No. Extra high. Could not open 3db library 13. 3db can be used to retrieve CD information such as album track, titles and artist name. Would you like me to install it for you? Yes. 
let's see if that side is going to do it seems to already be installed if you believe this is incorrect continue okay installation completed let's see if it's going to get which could not open freely oh. yes let's see if we can uh, install it ourselves manually and also let me check the library see if it is uh, installed but it doesn't find it for some reason no it is not installed so let me see if um, where is it three db um Falcon 11 says uh, but it was fun I mean converting uh, hours yeah it was it was fun the Amiga was burning but it was fun uh, Cito says it was fun it took hours but it was magic and very few could uh, do what we did the thing was with that was as I remember it, that uh, you could say that you can do it as well. You don't need, I don't need a PC to do it. I can do it on my Amiga. And that, that was the uh, great thing about that. That's why we were pre uh, waiting for it for a long time. Uh, Falcon 11 says, you didn't install Stack Attack yet? No. Uh, I haven't installed it. Uh, because I don't know why uh, I'm trying to keep my Amiga with the less needed uh, patches C277 says code audio looks very well made it is it is um, so 3db library I guess we need to download this one 17.2 I would like to see if I can get this um, information from online and if that uh, helps at all with the uh, information that uh, is written inside the uh, mp3 so I'm going to see uh, downloads 3db extract my ram uh, is now full of everything uh, 3db install okay i'm going to have it here and see what it needs to be done 3db libraries okay much user interface app it has an app okay Let's run the installer this time. Okay, choose where to install 3db. A drawer will, uh, called 3db will be created there. Hmm. Hmm. White points in code audio. Probably it finds something like an assign or something that points there which means code audio downloaded 3db it has the library but when it tries to open it it, it can't find it images disks okay before i do an installation Since code audio seems that installed it, 
I will try and restart the code audio and see if that finds it now or not. So next, okay, remove everything except the second track. Next, normal, extra high could not open FreeDB library. That's weird because I don't see any library like that. Even here, no, it's here it is, okay. Code sets, I don't want to install it because it comes with much user interface, like the character sets. No, no, okay, so if I go and install this library only. I have uh, on the left side, I have the uh, FreeDB as I extracted that in uh, the RAM. So I copy that library into my libs. Uh, get free.com, could not get FreeDB handle. Okay, back, next. No, it doesn't work. Yes. Will it uh, install it? Checking the CDDB installation. Code Audio is a great application. I have that registered on my Amiga OS 4 and I did that back in uh, when it was released, back when it was named uh, still uh, MPEG and code uh, GUI. <laughs> so if you, if you like this uh, application and you find it useful, I would uh, recommend you to uh, register. That is weird because the um, you see that the encoding is uh, already started, but for some reason it uh, requires the proc deal, which was the proc deal that I used when I mentioned where exactly is the the binaries. Or it does it was not working because it couldn't find it. So if I uh, close that. It goes back to the whole uh, application and if I go prefs, does it have here? Yes, here is, it seems that when you try to do the conversion, it doesn't understand where the proc tier is. So I'm going to go with a full path. Proc tier usually is the uh, folder of the of where you started the application so for code audio is the folder where i started the application uh, the, the code audio folder but uh, sometimes like that it doesn't understand it so you have to go with the full uh, path close i guess the list is not populated anyway the process here is exactly the same. You click on CD, you remove or add more files uh, if you want, and then you close the list and uh, you press encode and it starts encoding. Like that right now, it spins the CD. And from the tabs here, you have all the different um, 
encoders, decoders and players for Oakplay and Pega and all this stuff which is cool and we can stop it yes quit okay and that's how you can convert ah let's let's listen to the audio that we converted earlier so music uh, Amiga amp add file parent music Commodore 64 the first one Ah, we can't hear it because the audio, I need to change the... So now it plays uh, as an mp3, the one that we captured earlier. And you can see here that it is 320 uh, kbps. The uh, conversion that we did earlier. Uh, Falcon Level says uh, maybe you don't have assigned it in code audio. It I, I used the proc here. It should work like that, but it depends on the application. It might. Um, you know what, now that I'm thinking it, the, the code audio is uh, the front end, okay? So it tries to call the lame, the encoder, uh, as an external uh, application. So the external application doesn't know the proc tier. That's why it possibly doesn't work like it should. Uh, and that's why it needs the uh, full path. Falcon Level says RAM is great idea, yes. I always extract anything in RAM, especially if you have so much RAM. Uh, people say that uh, we have a lot of RAM, what can we do with that? Extract things there. <laughs> if you have uh, more than 800 uh, megabytes of RAM, you can put a whole game there and it's great, it's fine. Uh, yeah, it, it needs, I guess, a little bit of um, playing around with it and see why the 3DB and all this stuff are not uh, working like it should. But, uh, yeah. And uh, we have seen right now the audio players. We have seen how you can use this kind of uh, uh, CD-ROMs. If you have the chance, if you have a PCMCA uh, machine, sorry, if you have an Amiga that has a PCMCA, like the 600 or the 1200, and you would like such a CD-ROM, which is perfect because it is small, you can have it even on your Amiga like that, uh, I would recommend it. It works perfectly with games, with everything. The only downside is that you have to connect the audio at the side of the CD-ROM. But you can't have it on everything. Maybe if you get a mixer, a small mixer that gets the output from the CD-ROM and the output from the Amiga and give it to the uh, speakers and you mix the audio from there might be a solution. Um, so what else can we see today? We have seen the Play CD, how you can get it from the Amiga OS 3.9 and uh, use it on your uh, Amiga OS 3.2. Um, Amiga Kami says, I am so glad that CD32 mixes the CD audio internally. Yes. Yeah, that is that is great. I don't know, I don't remember the motherboard if it had the, um, a way to connect uh, the audio output from the CD32 on the, the motherboard and mix it or they use something like um, um, the ID connection or some something like that 
if, if I remember correctly, the Amiga CD32 CD ROM was basically an audio CD uh, player, right? And they did some tricks to um, be able to get data from that CD ROM. I don't have a clue how this is connected and if it is a basic ID uh, CD ROM. Amika Kami says, I'm not sure, but I don't think it's a separate connection. It must all come through the same uh, ribbon. That's the thing, even with the 1200, I remember back in the day, uh, I had um, a hard disk and a CD-ROM connected to the internal ID uh, connection of the 1200 and with uh, a player like the... Uh, how it's called? The... The song player that song player was able to play the audio CDs through the ID and I didn't need to get the audio from anywhere else or to use a mixer or something maybe that's how the uh, CD32 is working I'm not sure I'm not 100% sure maybe Again, we used the uh, audio CD from the Commodore 64 uh, Rocks. Guys, I can't recommend it uh, more. The collection has three CDs. Uh, it has every CD. It has... Uh, 18, 19 uh, songs. So we are talking around... Uh, 55, 56 uh, songs in this uh, collection uh, of Commodore, of four song Commodore uh, music, and uh, there is also the uh, Amiga Rocks collection. I can't recommend enough uh, to to get them. Uh, Cito, the last time that we uh, met, I was playing this kind of uh, music at uh, your house and it was if you remember it it was uh, awesome i like it a lot even uh, when i'm uh, coding i use this kind of music to uh, focus and uh, it's great i love it um amika kami says i doubt it that method samples uh, the audio to play it back i think it wouldn't be very efficient for games maybe maybe and uh, yeah, what else? What else can we see uh, in the rest of the stream for a few minutes ago, uh, more? I have um, some uh, graphics applications that I would like to show you. Some are not working quite well, um, but some are uh, working fine. Let me check uh, the looks paint. And let me open. I will not try an RTG screen, but I will try a classic screen. Let's see which one. Excuse my bad screen for uh, because this is coming from the um, native Amiga output, and uh, the scan doubler that I'm using is not that uh, great. Um, so yeah, uh, it seems that the looks paint is working fine with uh, Pystorm. I know that this is the uh, tool that uh, Vincent likes to, to use. Vincent has an awesome um, YouTube channel guys so you can check it out there. He's uh, doing a lot of um, videos, Amiga videos with Amiga content. Unfortunately for the most of you is not going to um, you are going to find them a little bit difficult because they, uh, Vincent is uh, uh, talking only in Greek in his videos but you can use the auto translation if you want he's playing a lot with uh, the uh, 
with uh, Deluxe Paint and he is doing a lot of tutorials for the Amiga and uh, other tools that you might want to use. Uh, let's see if the fill works as it should or it crashes the Amiga. No, it works just fine as it seems. So it's great. <laughs> Uh, so it's it, if you have a Python, you can use the Deluxe Paint just fine. Um, I don't see any anything that is a problem. Now, if that refresh is fast enough, I think there was some kind of discussion, I don't know if this is fixed already. Um, about the PyStorm and the speed that it has with the chip, me uh, chip memory. Um, and um, it seems that the chip memory usage in uh, PyStorms are a little bit slow uh, and uh, that impacts this uh, redraws here. I don't know right now to tell you if this is fixed or not, but this is a known problem for the Pystone. Uh, and of course everything is working fine. Let's clear it and let's try, uh, this is the free one, right? And let me try to some uh, with idealizing like that, which seems fast, and what if I do take a, no, let me do some like that, and then this one, and then take this brush, I have a dializing enabled, so you see the speed of it drawing something, you can't uh, draw and uh, drag it. It takes some time to draw it with idealizing. If I disable the idealizing, it's much faster, of course. Like that. And let me see the idealizing on low. Yeah, it takes much more time to do it. just to get a, a, a clear view on how to expect from um, this kind of uh, tool on uh, Python. This is here, uh, personal paint RTG disable blitter. I don't have a personal paint right now to try it out. What are you getting with that? Personal paint. Yeah, I don't have the personal paint. Oh, I have the personal paint. Okay. You said RTG disable blitter. Because we are using the RTG, you mean it disables automatically the blitter? Give us some information, man. So, as you can see, the personal page right now opened in uh, RTG. Okay. So, I can. Okay, let me open a different uh, image format. Okay. Falcon 11, thanks for the stream. Thank you for being here. Have a good evening. Bye bye and a great weekend. Um, okay, let's see what we can do with that. So if we get this, we can draw like this. 
okay, great, clear. I'm then I'm not the best of uh, artists, as you can see with the. Uh, it goes uh, too slow right now <laughs> to do the brush with that uh, selection of free drawing as you can see and um, but if I check this brush for example this is fine Okay, if I get again this, this is fine, great. If I go with that, the continuous free drawing is not that fast with the brush. But with a default brush is fine. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> Tethering. No. Quick want. Does it have here? Transparency. I'm pretty sure that the people who are using this kind of uh, tools know much more than me. So I don't have much to show you other than it works fine. And have in mind that this is the 7.1C, I think. Where is the about project memory program? This is the version, the latest version that was uh, freely available, uh, 7.1C. And uh, you can find a newer version, uh, but it is commercial and you have to buy it from uh, Mika Kit uh, for the 68k uh, systems. If you like this application and you want to use it a lot, let me see can I load any image? Do I have any of the classic clone image? Uh, proceed, yes. If I change the screen, image format, okay, let's go to 800-600, proceed and stretch it, okay, it did that pretty fast. Now, can I select this and take it as a brush? Does it have any filters that I, can, I could do? Palette stencil. Okay. Let's convert it to sixty four. You see the at the background how fast it changes it. Nice. Uh C2 says uh, the looks paint was fine too, the slow brush drawing is okay. I don't know, uh, I don't have my classic Amiga uh, the, with uh, the 68030 uh, powered up to, to compare with the deluxe paint or power paint, uh, personal paint, to see if there is a difference in uh, the speed. The RX button has some filters. Yes, this is brush format, define animation GIF, GIF, GIF to PNG, 
ISO palette Whirlpool execute no I don't know how to use it, sorry. Um, what else? Real 3D seems to work. Uh, this is the version that was uh, available free of charge with uh, AmiKit at some point. Uh, Okay, let me open one of the projects. Insert. Here it is. And I'm not good with uh, this program as well. You can select, let me see, where is it, the, no, you can't go to, view, okay, render, settings here and you can say r3d3 okay the folder where to to save that file and you can set here the mode if it is outlined environment labless to make it faster shadowless it doesn't have any shadow so let's go with a normal and it has a dializing I going to reduce the idealizing or let's leave it on two and see how it goes and render window so right now it does the rendering and it's it should save it in the file that uh, I mentioned earlier. Real 3D was very powerful and super customizable. Real 3D is a great application. You can do so many things with that, but man, the, the user interface is so complicated. Uh, it is difficult to, for me to understand how it works. I, I started doing 3D with the real 3D, the version 1, uh, back in the day, uh, which I found in uh, one of the magazines. It was coming with one of the magazines and I was playing with 3D with that application. The version 3 is so complicated um, and it's difficult to even set up the uh, scale resolution that you want to, to use it. Uh, for me to make it work on uh, AmicaOS uh, 4 it was so complicated because inside the projects there is information about the resolution of the screen and it's, it's crazy. And inside the project you have also information about uh, what kind of windows are open, uh, what kind of views you want to have and things like that. For example here we have this kind of view in a different window. It uses so much the RTG, but it is it is weird. It is a weird application uh, for me. And also, when you have RTG, you can't uh, render inside the window here, for example, uh, because the, the the colors are uh, completely broken. So, yeah. It, it's it's better, for example, to, to render to a file and see the result, like we are doing here right now. Uh, otherwise, the the 
colors are broken and it is not uh, useful to render inside the window in RTG. Uh, C277 says that the render took all night on O30. Yes, it is fast, uh, but have in mind that it's using uh, FPU right now, I think. All the 3D applications are using FPU, right? And it takes a little bit because we have also idealizing it, all the shadows and everything. But it's a good test to see how much, uh, how fast it is. And because you want CPU, it is in 100%. And but uh, workbench is quite uh, snappy, as you can see, and everything uh, is uh, flying. And let's stress it a little bit and go here, music, and open Eagle Player, run it. It still renders at the back. Nothing multitasks like an Amiga. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At that level of uh, CPU uh, speed, right? Um, it, it is pretty good, I guess. Let's make it crash. Yeah, the, the uh, C2 says, I think the renderer reaches the glasses. Yes, exactly. Um, that's why the the first choice was to the mode to be shadowless, because shadows are quite heavy. Photogenix is awesome application for RTG. It is the most compatible application that I have uh, used in any system. It understands everything correctly. It doesn't have any issues. It's pretty fast.
Hey Javier, welcome. <laughs> None of this. I'm uh, really lousy with everything that has to do with art. I can't do any music, I can't do any <laughs> graphics, not at all. I'm just writing at the back, if you see here, a rendering on uh, Real 3D, and it takes a little bit of time, so I thought to stretch the system as much as possible, having some uh, mods playing, and also uh, run the photogenics and see how it behaves, when it's going to, to crash. And it's not bad at all, I would say. C277 says, uh, drawing like that when ready, try that on a PC. <laughs> okay, uh, we can't uh, compare, let's say, uh, that's not a comparison. PCs are doing a lot of uh, better, a lot better uh, rendering uh, with a lot more uh, things to calculate and they also use multiple cores in CPUs, right? It's completely different uh, thing. You can't uh, compare them. Now, if you go and compare it with uh, 486 uh, from back in the day, or uh, even a Pentium uh, 133, yes, you can. You can say that I can compare them. Single core or something, yes. Uh, Javier says drawing the pen or hand draw. Amiga OS 3.2 rock solid as it inherits Amiga OS 4 stuff. Yes. Um, right now I I did all the stream without a single uh, reboot, but it's time to do it, I guess. <laughs> At some point it will crash. Uh, so I would like to go here and uh, I have the crop. So as you can have seen. I loaded a, a 1024768 PNG match and you have seen how fast it loaded and now I'm cropping this like that let me close the one at the back and let me see if I can do some uh, effects This is for crop, fill the paint layer. Um, motion blur. Okay.
Let me see how I apply that uh, filter. Is that, is, that, is that with fix, I think? It doesn't do anything. Let me see if I close these programs. I think I'm going to stop the, st the um, rendering because it takes a lot of time. It needs 39 minutes, so I'm going to stop it. Uh, it, and I'm going to try and do it. Where is it? Uh, settings. Instead of normal, I'm going to try shadowless without idealizing and see how it goes down. Uh, it is actually two cups. Here. Uh, it's 77 says, man, the music with the Amiga OS, photogenics and the whole visuals is like back to the future Amiga style. <laughs> yes. Uh, also smaller resolution. I think the, let me see. Yeah, the width and height is uh, close to 800, to 600. Let's see how it goes like that. Because it says two minutes, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> two cups and uh, reminders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you can see, the screen that it opens is quite. Uh, Weird. Uh, from the environment, you can change it. Uh, Forty percent.
Maybe photogenics doesn't. Uh, it's not closing right now because it tries to do the uh, effects that I like. Uh, uh, that I tried earlier. Sixty-eight per sixty-nine. Soon it is going to be over. So, uh, guys, please let me know which uh, 3D uh, application would you like to, to use. Is it uh, Lightwave, the one that uh, you like most, the Cinema 4D? Which one? Real 3D3 uh, version 3? Uh, the Imagine? There are so many in uh, Amiga. <laughs> For me personally, I love the Cinema 4D because it is. Uh, the environment is more intuitive and you can do so many things without even check out the, the manual. It is pretty easy to understand how to use it and create something. Uh, Cito says our sweet real 3D is so weird in so many ways. Until you, you understand how to use it. But the thing is that there are not so many uh, videos available online for Real 3D, unfortunately. Okay, so right now the image should be rendered. And uh, let me see. Where exactly did we put it? Let me check again. The path. R3D3 images. Okay, let me switch these two images. And the classic glass peak. That's the one that we rendered. You see, it doesn't have any idealizing. Um, and there are no shadows, of course, but it was uh, fast, let's say. Uh, Javier says light wave and renderer a typical Babylon 5 uh, ship or scene. Yes, light wave is awesome. Uh, sometimes Muadip is uh, joining our streams, he's doing a lot of uh, light wave. He have done um, in the past a lot of streams, live streams for Lightwave, which are all in uh, YouTube. Um, I think more than 20 streams with Lightwave content. So if you are into Lightwave, I would suggest you to go and have a look. Uh, actually, let me uh, check here the application oh, that's it. because we like to do everything on uh, Amigas so I'm going to go to movies Amicube and uh, check out here uh, about light wave and let's see what we are going to get back And while we are doing that, we are going to change. I'm going to take another website. Streams. Streams. Dot mega dash projects dot net. <coughs> And uh, light wave. So here it is. He's a. Um, 
uh, YouTube channel is Amiga Muadib, which you can find a lot of uh, content. How to use uh, Lightwave and uh, other tools as well. And he's using for uh, his video, for his animations, uh, Vista Pro to play the, the videos. A lot of content guys. Starting from uh, people who doesn't know much about uh, Lightwave and uh, up to quite difficult things to do. Difficult for me. Uh, Vista Pro so nice and World Construction Set. There is a newer version of uh, World Construction Set uh, released uh, recently, uh, but I haven't uh, checked it out yet. It has some fixes, I think, and optimizations on the rendering. And uh, you can also check out Vincent GR, uh, who is in the chat. Uh, he has also, um, his own, let me find it. Vincent GR. Here it is. Vincent's um, YouTube channel. A lot of content for Amiga and not only that, but it might be Greek to you because he's talking in Greek, uh, but if you use the auto translation with a, uh, with a YouTube player, you might be able to see and understand what uh, he's talking about. As you can see, he has a lot of uh, Amiga content here and tutorials. And also I remember he created one uh, nice video using Cinema 4D to design a joystick. Uh, it's somewhere over there. Yes, so we have seen a lot of things today, right? We have seen how to connect the PCMCI CD-ROM on the Amiga 1200 and how to set it up to use it. We have seen how to uh, use Play CD from Amiga 3.9. We have seen uh, how to install Groovy Player and uh, listen to audio CDs uh, from the CD-ROM, uh, straight from the CD-ROM, and how to capture, how to rip music from your audio CDs to MP3s. What kind of uh, application you should uh, use to do something like that. And other than that, we have seen uh, Real 3D running, uh, we have seen Del Deluxe Paint, Personal Paint, um, the awesome uh, Photogenics, and I have tried a few other applications, but they are crashing, unfortunately. Uh, and they possibly are crashing because the installation that I did uh, was not uh, perfect. Uh, emulators on Python. <laughs> that's a big, that's a big uh, topic, uh, Javier. Yeah, the only emulators that I, I am uh, interested in are those that are playing uh, Commodore 64 games. Uh, the I know that people like uh, Amstrad games, uh, Spectrum, and uh, things like that, and they could like to um, install something like that on your their Amiga. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to, to show things like that on my on my streams. Uh, not because I don't like these uh, computers, but uh, it's not something that interests me to have in my Amiga installed. Sorry. Mac Basilisk. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Maybe if we see uh, some kind of um, uh, distribution uh, that has all the stuff at, uh, in the future, we, it will be interesting. ScamVM is an interesting uh, uh, thing to, to have a look uh, in the future. Um, because the adventures are playing pretty well on Pystorm and it will be nice to see 
how well and what can you do? Can you play Phantasmagoria, for example, on uh, your 1200? That would be great. Uh, all those new game ports, Doom Rise of the Triads. Okay. We have seen. Uh, we have seen Doom. We have seen, I think, uh, Death Rally. Uh, Rise of the Triads. No, but we have seen Blood. And Diablo. Also. Star Wars Dark Forces. It is uh, in one of my previous uh, streams we have seen these kind of games and also if you check a couple of streams ago I did a, a, a stream about the Gorky 17 and the Heretic 2 running on the Python. Uh, if you missed that uh, have a look on my um, uh, YouTube uh, website, YouTube channel. Let me see here if you can find it. Yeah, if you go youtube.com slash uh, at Volcaro. You will find my YouTube channel and I have here the Gorky 17 uh, which Gorky 17 is going to be released soon today tomorrow is going to be available from a linear shop to to buy it and uh, play on your Pystorm uh, or any other 68k Amiga that you have just have in mind that it is something that uh, it is requires a lot of resources so don't try it on uh, 030 or an 040 060 and above um, oh yes that was a nice uh, stream showing 68k uh, games yeah yeah those all these games are uh, great and uh, but there are so many there's a plethora of uh, games to try on uh, any Amiga, right? Uh, so, yeah, that's it for today. I think uh, I'm pretty happy of what we covered. Um, next week I'm going to show something different, I think. And um, remember, on uh, Tuesdays I'm doing the uh, Amiga OS 4 Gaming Nights. Last Tuesday, a few days ago, uh, I played the, I continued the Doom 3 and uh, I reached the final boss. Uh, if you uh, have seen my recording on Twitch, uh, I am at the final boss, I believe, and I need to beat it. So next Tuesday I'm going to try to beat it. And if we have time, I hope that I'm going to have time, um, I'm going to show you some other uh, games. Um, or it might be the opposite, maybe I show you some other games and then beat uh, Doom 3. Uh, we'll see how it goes, uh, because I have some other in interesting stuff to, to show. And I'm, going, I'm thinking to do um, only racing games. We will see. Oh, <laughs> Doom 3 Finale. Yes, I think, I hope so. Uh, thank you so much everyone for being here. Uh, let me remind you that I have my uh, blog, Amiga blog, at coffee.com slash Volcaro. You can find there uh, posts about every project that I am working on and information about uh, those streams and recordings of the previous streams. Uh, I would like to thank all my monthly supporters who are Breed, Christopher White, Daniel Zedlika, Emek, Liverlord, Tim Grooms. I would like to thank you all for being here, Javier, thank you for being here, Aris Amiga, Chitu77, thank you for passing by, Vincent GR, uh, who else, uh, let me go back, Falcon11, thank you for being here, Amiga Kami, thanks for passing by, um, everyone, thanks, uh, I'm really, really happy to have you here, I hope that uh, the stream was 
interesting for you as well. And uh, let's have a look if we can find someone to, to raid uh, before we close the stream. Uh, is there anyone who plays any game on Amigas? Let me see. Again, no Amiga gaming. It seems that uh, Fridays is not time for Amiga gaming. No, nothing at all. Let's see anything about retro. Let's give a raid to Amiga Live and in case someone tries uh, starts playing any game there. So guys, thanks so much for being here. Wish you have a, a great uh, weekend and uh, see you soon. Bye bye.